Hello again from Blast It All here in Salisbury, North Carolina. Today we're going to do an unboxing of our little blaster series 4024. At Blast It All, just a little note, we like to use our uh, dimensions of our cabinets as the model numbers. So this is a little blaster series, which would be LB. The width of the machine is 40 inches wide, it's 24 inches deep, so it's the LB 4024. This one has the optional 300 CFM reclaim, uh, so it would be the LB4024-3DB for a dust bag. So what we're going to do is go through, set the machine up, show you how that's done. We'll go over some of the features, talk a little bit about blast and all on our history, and we'll uh, use this for hopefully years to come as a setup manual. So if you have any questions beyond this, um, go to our Facebook page. Check in with Christy, our Facebook manager. Let her know what you need to find out and we'll do a video on that. And we'll try to explain much as much as we can about blasting, abrasives, and, and any other questions you might have. So without any further ado, let's uh, jump into it. Next thing we want to do is show you the tools we'll need to set the machine up. We've got some uh, Teflon tape. A half inch nut drive for the drill if you want to take the machine off the pallet. Some people like to leave it on the pallet so they can move it around their shop when they're not using it. A razor knife, please be careful with that. A half inch uh, ratchet with a 7 16 socket. We've got a 7 8 wrench, a 7 16 wrench, a 5 16 nut drive, and a 3 8 inch nut drive. We'll walk through and show you where we use each of these and um, let's move on. All right, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to open the door, show you what comes in the machine and we'll pull it all out and uh, put it all together. So you open the door, you see we've got a number four gun box uh, with a barb in there, the instructions, a foot pedal and a regulator. Pull that out and we'll open it up. The reason it's called a number four gun box is because we have a number four nozzle in the machine. It's a quarter inch. That quarter inch requires 21 CFM of compressed air to operate. It's a pretty special fact about these machines. You have to have enough compressed air. 21 CFM uh, should be around seven and a half horsepower compressor. Um, you'll hear different numbers from different companies that manufacture compressors. Uh, you can usually figure about three and a half CFM per horsepower. Uh, so make sure you have that volume of air um, before buying a blast cap. All right, so in this box, we have our foot pedal, half inch regulator, number four gun, the attached hoses, a half inch brass barbed fitting, and an instruction page in case you need to get to it to see where all these hoses connect. All right, barbed fitting. This is where your Teflon tape comes in. I've run some Teflon tape around here. I'll show you where it attaches to the machine. If you walk around the back of the machine, you'll see a half inch uh, threaded fitting on the back. This protrudes through the leg of the machine and is the same half inch threaded fitting on the inside. We want to tighten that barb fitting in um, with the Teflon tape because we're going to be running compressed air through here. Okay. okay you can cut. Next step, we're going to hook up the regulator and foot pedal. So follow me around to the front of the machine. The foot pedal can rest on the ground. We need to take the cap off this half inch regulator. It should just pull off. Set that somewhere. Then we've got a lock ring on there as well. The bracket on the front of the machine is already set up with a cutout. You can see the curve uh, for the pressure gauge to set in. So we'll get a good uh, tighten up on that lock ring to hold it down. Make sure when you put the cap back on you can see there's a square um, cutout for this top nut. So when you put the cap back on, make sure it seats all the way. And then to adjust the regulator, you're going to pull out, you'll hear it pop. That frees it up to be twisted and adjusted. And then when you're done adjusting, 
Next thing we need to do is hook up the compressed air hose um, from the back of the machine to the inlet of the regulator. You'll see we've already given you a, a hose clamp. Under that hose clamp is instructions on where this hose is to fit, just in case you need that instruction uh, without the video being there. This is where your flathead screwdriver will come in handy. So we'll take that, and as you can see, if you get in there tight, there's a uh, the barb fitting attached on the back of the machine. We're just going to push this hose right over the top of that, and then walk around to the back of the machine and tighten up the hose clamp. All set. Next thing we'll do is we'll bring the air outlet out of the foot pedal and run it through the side of the uh, machine. We'll have to use our flathead screwdriver again to remove the hose clamp. And we're going to pass this through this grommet on the side of the machine. We're going to work it up inside of there. It doesn't matter how far right now, we just need to get it up inside and out of the way. And we'll attach the gun later on. The reclaim out of the way because we're going to be connecting some hoses down here. So I'll use my uh, drill with the 3 8 bit and take that out, get it out of the way. This reclaim is a little heavy, it's a little awkward, so you might want to use two people. But if you're careful, you can do it without too much damage to you or your reclaim. So let's go back inside the cabinet and pull out what's next. You can see in there, we've got a couple more bags. This is gloves and a roll of Mylar. We have a dust bag and another big hose clamp. Another bag with a media valve and the nuts and bolts to connect the reclaim to the back of the machine along with your manual with parts and instructions as well. The last thing we have inside is the four inch flex hose that will connect from the bottom of the machine up to the reclaim. All right, the machine should be empty now. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the work grate from inside connect up the hoses for the gun and the foot pedal, and then put the work grate back inside. This work grate is simply set inside the cabinet. If you rock it up, you can just lift it out of the machine, but please be very careful, these edges are sharp, and uh, they can bite. So we'll move that out of the way. The next thing I like to do is hook the gun up, um, at least run the hose through the back of the machine. There's a grommet on the back side of the machine that will push this through. I take the gun and I just hang it through the front armhole, give it a place to rest, and then run the hose through that back grommet of the machine. Now that I have the hoses run, and they're hanging out the front arm hole of the machine, I'm going to put the work grate back in so that it's not in the way later on. Again, be very careful. Here's where the hose clamp we held from earlier on comes into play. And we'll be using our flathead screwdriver again. These clamps have to be installed because this is a compressed air fitting and you don't want the hose blowing off the back of the gun. Make sure the clamp is on the hose. And then push that hose onto the back of the gun until it seats and then tighten that clamp.
Next bag. In here we're going to have two pop-in gloves. Uh, a Blast It All difference. Uh, Blast It All came up with this pop-in glove feature uh, decades ago. It's been imitated by others. But we started it. We include it with all our machines. We have a roll of mylar in here. The roll of mylar, as we'll show you, slides behind the front window. There's 10 feet of it on here. Protects your window glass from being uh, hazed over by abrasive uh, in the blast process. So let's unbox these and get them on the machine. Make sure you've got a right and a left. These gloves are available uh, for resale on our website and our online store. Any purchase on there, over $50 gets free shipping. And you can see how easy these are to change. The gloves simply pop into place. And we're ready to go. That's it. Right. Next thing we'll do is we'll take the window frame off so we can get that mylar roll in and get it behind the glass. The window frame, you just take the wing nuts off, pretty simple setup. Get that cardboard out of there that we ship with it to protect the glass during shipping. The window frame lifts off, cardboard comes out. You get rid of that. Lift the window glass off, be very careful. Let's see, simply. It's down inside of the Mylar dispenser. We'll unravel a little bit. And then we'll set it down under the Mylar. And reattach our window frame. With that 10 feet of Mylar in there, it's like having 10 new windows. Now we'll move over to the back of the machine and install the reclaimer and all those hoses. I'm going to have your media valve and the nuts and bolts for installing the reclaim. This part will take two people. So I brought Josh, our tech support guy out. He's going to help me here. So I'm going to take the four bolts and I'm going to put them on top of the machine so that I can reach them and pass them through for Josh to tighten the nuts on once we get them started. We should be in good shape again. Usually it takes two people to do this, so we'll get it up and ready. The next thing we're going to do is spin the media valve on the bottom of the reclaim. The media valve comes with a barb fitting an open 1 8 inch fitting that has to stay open. Lots of times people see that and they think we've missed something by not putting a cap on there. That open fitting allows air to come in with the media and create the vacuum needed to pull the media up into the airstream and blast with it. That's what makes this machine a suction blast cabinet. It's also got a 2 inch PVC plug that you can remove to change media. This Hand tight is good enough for that. There's no compressed air used in that. And then we'll just take our gun hose and push it onto the fitting. We should be good to go. This is a 300 CFM reclaim. It's optional on the Little Blaster 4024. What this does is it pulls all the media from the bottom of the cabinet, puts it into a cyclone, spins the media and dust, the dust will come out through the discharge port into a dust bag while the good heavy media will fall back down through a trash screen and into the cone to be reused in the gun. 
we call a reclaim because we recycle media. So a good glass bead media will travel eight to 10 times through this system before turning to dust if you're blasting, again, at 60 to 80 PSI. The trash screen sifts out all the big chunks, the paint chips and things that would clog the gun up. So all you're getting down here is good, fresh, clean media to go back into your gun. Next thing we'll do is we'll connect the flex hose from the bottom of the cabinet up to the reclaim. Good to go. The last bag you should have is your dust bag and hose clamp. We're going to take this, we're going to hang it on the discharge of the reclaim, and then we'll move on to plugging the machine up and turning it on. When you open your dust bag, you'll see we have an inlet for the reclaim. All we're going to do is slip the hose clamp over that, slide the bag over the opening. On the reclaim, move the clamp into place. Tighten it down. All we need to do now is plug the machine up, add media, connect some compressed air to the machine, and you're ready to blast. On the back of the machine, you'll see there's two plugs. And on the back of the light box, you'll see there's an output. So we're gonna take the motor, plug, and we're gonna plug it in to the bottom outlet on the light box. And then this plug will run to your power source. So once we plug the machine in and you've taken uh, compressed air to this point, this is uh, where you'll connect up your air source. We recommend that you use a full open half inch fitting. Try not to use quick connects. They restrict the airflow too much. And if you're running a compressor that's a seven and a half horsepower, um, you don't have a lot left over to try and overcome the restrictions um, through a quick connect or something like that. So if you can run a full, uh, a full open half inch port to this, you'll be good. Last thing we'll do is plug the machine up, turn it on, make sure the blower works, and you're ready to go. show you the wear parts that you can get through Blast It All's online store at www.blastitall.com. The first thing you'll see is uh, the gloves. The gloves wear out first. The pop-in gloves are available. Of course the rolls of Mylar. Uh, we can get window glass at the online store. You come around to the inside of the machine the gun itself can be purchased on the online store or you can get replacement nozzles. The nozzle spin off, the new ceramic nozzle. If you'll look, the part number for your nozzle should be printed on the side. It spins right off, spins right back on. Sometimes they get some uh, media in there, it's a little harder to get that nozzle retaining ring off. If you don't have a part number on the side of your nozzle, on the back of the gun, you'll see a number stamped in the brass nut. That four represents a number four gun and allows you to go get that nozzle regardless. We have a light protector in here. Uh, it's a Lexan light protector. Those are available on our online store. The door gasket will wear over time. That's available there as well. And the dust bag, um, when you go to empty your dust bag, you'll zip it open on the bottom. 
Empty your spent media and dust out. This is available on our online store. Uh, we try and stamp the part number into the bag. Sometimes it doesn't make it all the way, but this is an 11 dash 415 and then finally on the back of the machine the reclaim hose which is four inches available on the online store any of the half inch blast hose is available there as well the trash screen on the inside of the cabinet is replaceable um, the inner door gasket on the reclaim is replaceable as well one of the things that sets blasted all apart from our competitors, this little device here. It's a parts door. We put this on the front of the cabinet. It seems like a kind of an inconspicuous thing, but once you've dropped that small nut or bolt or part through the work grate and you need to get to it, it's laying right here. <laughs> Couple other points that set us apart from our competitors. We've got double walled doors. At the top, we put an angled piece across, and at the bottom, we put an angled piece across. This seems pretty simple um, and, and, and not like a big deal, but when you're blasting, the media wants to try and catch in this corner. This helps the media fall back down into where it needs to be in the bottom of the cabinet instead of on your floor. So when you open this door, you'll see that there's no ledge there for media to set on as you're blasting, uh, it can get caught up back in that corner if this is a flat piece. Little items like that set us apart, and that's why we call it the Blast It All Difference. Thanks for tuning in and watching our setup of the Little Blaster 4024. Check out our YouTube channel and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to see any other videos, please go on to our Facebook page and leave a comment for uh, Christy, our Facebook manager, and she'll make sure she gets that to us. And we'll do videos uh, from here on out. Thank you again and have a great day.